Jennifer Davis here for VSI, and today I am talking with Chris and Laura Denkers. Hello, you guys. Hi. Hello. How are you? <laughs> Hello. Okay, so today we are talking about keeping up with your kids. I have two kids. How many do you have? We have twin 15-year-old boys, identical okay. boys. On a scale of one to 10, how hard is it to keep up with our kids? <laughs> Above. <laughs> Above 10, <laughs> Right, it's probably yeah. the same as your kid's age, yes. Okay, well, we're doing this topic today because I interview a lot of patients at VSI, and over and over again, one of the things that I hear is that pain is often something that gets in the way of parenting. It often keeps parents from doing what they wanna do, um, you know, in addition to being difficult for them, but it can be a really great source of frustration for people. So we, you guys have, Chris, you have an amazing story to tell. Laura, you really bolster it in a way that I think when we're talking about one parent in pain, it certainly affects both parents. <laughs> so we've brought you into the conversation today too. Um, so let's just start with your story, Chris, and kind of uh, walk us through. As you mentioned, you have 15 year old twin boys. Yep. They are kind of, I know we all think our kids are extraordinary. Yours are <laughs> kind of extraordinary. Um, yeah. Give us that overview. Why? What's ex what's especially special about your kids? Uh, well, our kids were, they're born premature at 27 weeks. Um, they're identical. So they're in the same sack. Um, and the reason they were born premature was one of the, one of my sons, Riley had a perforated bowel. So they had to go in a week after he was born when he was under two pounds and pretty much removed the per perforation and then um, had an ostomy bag until his uh, due date, which is three months. So they spent the first three months in the NICU. They're going way back. Yeah. Well, <laughs> uh, and then from there, you know, he had another surgery to reattach and Wyatt had uh, multiple hernia surgeries and stuff like that. Um, and Your two kids are Wyatt and Riley. Yep. And yep. Uh, yes. Okay. So Laura, I know you want to jump ahead. I mean, look, they have cystic fibrosis, right? Yeah. That's, yep. Yeah. Yep. That was, yeah. that was, and we found out after they were born and after they got let out of the NICU, um, that they had cystic fibrosis, which is a genetic disease that affects the CFTR gene, which pretty and much that affects impacts their lungs, right? Yep. Mostly, it, uh, but mostly. also growth GI, um, you know, they, they, aren't supposed to be able to reproduce it clogs like every body part different so what we had to do was a regimen from you know morning to night um, treatments to just keep them breathing and and going so we really didn't envision you know what we're doing now <laughs> so yep. it became very important for us to keep up because we wanted them to just thrive so yep. Laura, yeah, that's, yeah. I don't mean to make you cry, but that is why your story, I wish I had a Kleenex to give you. This is why the story is so amazing, I think, right? Because they yeah. were going to fast forward through a lot of years of yes. heartache and challenge. Yeah. Yes. They got a medicine. It's been yeah. helping them a lot. And yep. suddenly yeah. they were able to get out in the world and do things and discovered yeah. that they're snowboarding champs. <laughs> they did one race that are now best friends that have become family invited us on this team at the mountain. And they were like, oh, they can come race with us. Put them in their team jackets. The kids felt like felt liquid awesome. gold. Yep. They raced. They both got invites to nationals. On one race, you have to do three in the whole series to qualify. There were three, um, two one day and one the other. They both did awesome. They qualified for nationals. So we were like, oh, my God, we never thought about going out west. Yep. But it's in Colorado. And you just earned your spot. So, yeah, we're going. <laughs> okay, so um, Literally, you've had to keep up with them. And Chris, you yep. know, again, your this story is just so interesting. So then you take up, well, you've skied before, but then you're yep. you're upping your skiing to try and keep up Very with your so. kids, right? Yeah, we ha yeah, we have to. I, I started to ski when I was in high school. Laura and I both grew up in upstate New York. So we skied, you know, skiing, there's ski, ski clubs. So schools would go to, you know, you no. could go to the mountain uh, with your school, you know, every week and stuff like that. So I, I started skiing in high school. And then when Laura and I met in college, you know, we skied and then we skied all the way through up until Laura got pregnant. And right after, um, you know, about six months after the boys were born, we brought, we moved down to uh, Virginia and it was probably until the kids were about five, five when we could start that. When again. we're like, oh, let's yeah. see, let's see how they do out on the snow, you know, go out for a quick trip and all that. And then the boys started to love it. So um, we just started to start going skiing here in Virginia. And then we found and fell in love with Snowshoe Mountain in West Virginia. 
and just eventually yeah. we're spending so much money going on vacation there. We, we bought a little condo there. So, and that kind of helps because that first year the boys started to snowboard, um, almost like full winter. Um, when they got invited to do that race, um, we had that place and we sold our house for our business. So we, Laura and the boys pretty much moved yeah. up there full time. The boys started then, that medicine trikafta that made it so we didn't have to do their lung treatments. Their yep. lungs were really good, good enough. Um, they did start declining still. So the next couple of years were a lot of exercise with the snowboarding. Chris started competing because we were there anyway, and we didn't always have coaches, and you're not allowed at the top. So there are a lot of kids there that don't know when their turn is to drop. Um, we were just extra worried always with our kids just wanting to be there after going through so much. So he was like, well, I'm going to become an athlete because then I can be with them. And he did so good. He loved it. All the kids really did need him there. And he just took in any athlete that didn't have a coach and is helping them. And there are kids, you know, four and up. So there are very little kids that need more adults up there. So everyone in the organization loved having him. Um, and it was just a really okay, so good now vibe. He's, so now he's coaching and then you're competing yourself and then yep. you start yep. to win too, right? <laughs> yes. Yeah. I start, I didn't, I wasn't coaching then. I was just more of an athlete. And, yep. um, and so I was up at the top helping our coaches and other coaches with wrangling in all the kids and making sure they're, they get to the start gates on time and do all that stuff on time. And then I started winning, doing rail jam and slope style, and um, and then which is basically like an obstacle course on the mountain. Is that um, right? Kind this of. one's more like park, um, like okay. a skateboard park on yep. snow. Um, no and how old? Yep. How old are you, Chris? Sorry, I have a cold. I sound like no. Um, you're good. Right now, I'm 41. So when I started you? to compete, I was 39. Okay. And how old are you now? 41. Okay, so you're chasing your kids and a bunch of other kids too as a coach yep. and you're yep. competing and doing all this stuff. And I know you've always had, maybe not always, but for like a decade, you've had back pain sort of off and on. Yes. But as you started picking up the pace to keep up with your kids um, and doing more and more of these athletic things, your back pain got worse. Laura, you said a sentence to me that really struck. You said his back was never a priority, but it's always been a problem. Yes, At what point sure. did it become such a big problem that you were like, I got to do something about this? Well, already was... last year, he had to stop competing. So he was only a coach. Um, and then now this year, it would have probably taken away both by now. It was it was not good. He couldn't stand at all. Yeah. Yeah, it was when I competed, it was there and it hurt. Um, and then towards the end of the season, um, it got worse. And then I had a summer off um, and it kind of got a little bit better. Uh, but then I started to coach and got my coaching certificate um, and then hurt my back doing uh, the training for the coaching. And that kind of kept me out all season from um, competing. And so I was only coaching. But the problem with coaching is you're standing at the top of the hill all day, every day. And so standing in ski boots um, on snow, which is un an uneven surface, just kind of made it worse. And then my back got so bad I was losing um, – it was, I had no disc left between L5 and L4 uh, or L5 and S1. And um, that was pinching the nerves down to my legs. So after about five or 10 minutes of either walking or just standing, my legs would go completely numb. Mm -hmm. um, I know you that, guys were towards the end here before you got help, you were taking a, like a camping chair up the mountain and then skiing yeah. down yeah. and stopping and sitting in the camping chair so you could watch yeah. your kids race, right? Yes. Yeah, yep. pretty much. I brought a small little compact camping chair with me everywhere. Um, and so especially when we're at the top of the mountain, I was coaching, I'd have the chair, I'd be sitting in it and only really stand when I really needed to. Um, and then whenever I was, wasn't was coaching, was watching the kids compete. Yeah, I'd bring the chair with me everywhere Every and time. just kind of sit and watch because yeah. I couldn't yeah. just stand. Um, Which anymore. on a ski mountain on races, like it's not common um, to have that. So it was always, he was always kind of self-conscious too. Like I'm athletic and I have to sit. And, um, so it never felt good. It, it just got worse every year till it was taking away. And there was, there was no way we were going to let it take away anymore. Yeah. By the time know. spring and nationals turned around and came around for the boys and stuff like that, it was just so bad that, uh, I started reaching out and that's when I reached out to Dr. Good at BSI 
Um, now I know and, you'd had a doctor in the past say to you, many. "You're too young for surgery. Yep. Like it's, yeah. I would never have you do this." So it must have been hard to reach out for surgery when you saw Doctor Good. Were you like, "Look, I got some kids to keep up with, and I've got yeah, like yeah. the off season to fix and, this. So what yeah. are we gonna do?" Yeah, yeah. My big thing, like the the previous doctor I saw, he's like, "I usually do this on patients who are 65 and up." And he's like, I, I don't feel comfortable doing it on you because you're so young. I'm like, well, I'm having severe pain every day. I can barely, you know, walk and, you know, function. Um, and then when I went to Dr. Good, it was even worse than that. And I pretty much walked in and said, hey, you know, I don't know what your time frame is, but I have to be ready for ski season, uh, which is November, early November. So, you know, are, is that even possible? Because the last doctor was like six months to get me into surgery. And he's like, oh, I can fit you in in like three weeks. And I'm like, okay. And he's like, then the timetable will work perfectly. And you should be a, over 100% by the time you hit ski season. He was confident. Okay, so when, he had, when, oh, go ahead. Uh, he was so confident and knew and had so much more information on why this happened, how, what was happening. And it all made sense because Chris is really good about remembering and like all the connections of this is where it hurts when I do this. Things that I- yep put out my brain that cannot hold on. He knew exactly what it hurt when, and all of it was perfect in line with his action plan all the way through to how he was going to feel after. And he was right about all of it. Yep. So in yep. June of 2024, you had two surgeries, two days apart, and he yep. did both, right? He did a disc replacement yep. and a fusion. Um, right. What was surgery like? It was easy for me, at least. Um, it, easy. Yeah. Yeah, it really was. He, Dr. Good, we've gone through a couple surgeries, you know, between all our family. I've torn we my actually, ACL. Yeah. I've torn my ligament. I've got, yeah, I've had multiple surgeries before. And this was for as big of a surgery as it yeah. was. To me, it wasn't that bad. He and did test. Sorry. <laughs> I'm so excited, though. It was, it was. <laughs> Um, now we've gotten to the good part. I know everyone wants to talk did, about this part. He did different tests that we had never done, checking the nerves, checking the discs. Yep. We had answers and we had data. We had different things with um, the models. He took out models and showed us exactly what was happening inside the body. Yep. Um, yeah, I had a yeah. discology report which showed that the the L5 and L4 disc was ruptured. And so that's when he recommended doing a disc replacement on that which would also save my upper discs for, from the future. Um, Cause that was one of the issues with the first doctor was if, when you do a fusion, you lose the mobility and then you put a lot more strain on those upper discs. Mm -hmm. um, but having that replacement above the fusion almost eliminates that because mm -hmm. I still have. Movement. And it helps with your mobility too, right? Cause yeah. you needed to be able to. Yes. Yep. You, you got to move to keep up with the kids. Yes. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And then he found nerve damage, which was consistent with my, my legs going numb and all that stuff. Um, first day I went in for the surgery, um, we went in, I didn't go in till super late. That's not his fault. The OR didn't open up till then. So it was like 7 PM and I got there at like 6 AM. <laughs> so oh, yeah. it was a long day of not eating and, and just waiting. Um, but they got in and, um, pretty much fell asleep right after the surgery, mm -hmm. woke up the next day, was walking around. Um, they had yeah. me walking. I really didn't have many issues walking and stuff like that. And, I had and no after nerve. a decade, after a decade of pain, you said yeah. when you woke up, you had pain, but it was different. Can you explain? Incision pain. It was incision pain. Yeah, yeah because they had to go in from the front, from my stomach, uh, to do the replacement and the um, the fusion. So it was more uh, incision pain, not back pain. Um, and I had no more numbness instantly the the um, the first day. So when I was walking around in the hospital after that surgery, I didn't have any numbness in my legs, which was yeah. unusual. Yeah. What did you? Th I mean, were you amazed or were you like, ah, I knew this is what was going to happen? I, I was excited. Yeah. yeah. And still, at that point, we were very much like three months restriction. Three months. <laughs> so every day we got closer to yep. getting rid of that restriction, but we knew. We've got to let it heal and fuse right. So that was the next thing on our mind. The hardest part was over. Yep. Yeah. After that, I had yeah. the I had another surgery where they went into the from the back this time and put in a rod and some screws to really hold it in place, uh, which those can come out um, after a year. Um, but it's just kind of there to hold hold everything in. Um, those I could feel and I can feel the bump and I could feel that for a while. But now I don't feel it at all. Um, it's been three and a half months now. 
Um, okay, so right, we're several months out now, and yep. um, are you going to make it back on the mountain? Yes, I should be. He he says right now I'm about 85%, and I should be about 100% uh, and be able to go out and do everything I was doing before. Um, and by more. Yep, and by the end of November, which yeah. we're going to, first time we'll, we'll hit snow is probably early December. So everything's kind of lined out yep. perfectly for that. Yeah. So look, back surgery is scary for a lot of people, but not being able to keep up with your kids, Laura, as you should, yeah. like, it's literally something that can bring a parent to tears. So yeah. what have you learned through all this? I mean, it, it, it took you a decade to get the help that you needed, but now, you know, I How would, do you feel now I and want everyone would... to know about this option. You know, the streamlined doctors do not have the same solutions that are going to help you um, as well. You know, they might do the Band-Aid that you're going to pay for again later. This is something that gives us our full life, you know, and I can't, I wish we found it sooner, but I also don't know that we would have trusted everything earlier. I mean, we're the type of people that just go, 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 go. Yep. We don't <laughs> um, stop and our kids are the same way. Yeah. But looking <laughs> back, you know, this, I want everyone to know that this is an option and, and he will tell you what, and he gave us even percentages of like, cause some, you don't know everything and you can't give a thousand percent that this is all going to work for your whole life. You know, there's no real guarantees on anything in life. But he would be honest that this is the percentage of your quality feeling if we do this option. And, and, here's, and if I were in your position, this is what I would do. So we picked the package of the hybrid disc and the full cage replacement infusion. And that was the package for us. But he gave us so many other options, options that and, we could pick and, and choose from data behind yeah. it. It was just nothing like it is out there. And... This is the place to go for anything with your spine. Yes. And look, <laughs> the, individual, the individual solutions may be different for different exactly. people. For different exactly. people. Yep. yep. And but he the, has them. Yeah. yeah. But the bottom line is in your 40s, it's not, you know, right. Yeah. You're not, <laughs> We're you're not, not supposed to give either. up chasing your yeah. kids at that point, no. exactly. right? You we don't, don't want to go backwards. No. Yeah. And, and what we've always loved about skiing and snowboarding is it's a, something we can do as a family. So even when they started competing, we all did it we're as a family. We're all out on the mountain. We're all going around. And then when I'm coaching, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm helping them coach uh, on the mountain. Mm -hmm. uh, and I didn't want to lose any of that because now they're, they're to the stage where they're starting to do pro races this I upcoming know. year. They got so it's, well, and now I have my coaching, my U.S. ski team coaching, so I can actually be there with them for that stuff as well, yeah. um, which is really awesome. And they got a 100% lung function test after – really pushing hard at the end of last season um, and being out at the high elevations longer. Yep. I think it really just, they don't even know they're pushing beyond their limit and they're healing themselves. So we need to be there. <laughs> yep. And so the lesson, the takeaway for other parents, Chris, is what? Takeaway is don't be afraid to get surgery. It is scary. Um, I was definitely nervous leading up to it, but once it happened, I just instantly knew that it was the right choice. Yeah. And it is for someone who's as active as I am and do as much as I do. Um, it was tough for me to sit three months out and let the kids and Laura kind of do everything. You know, I couldn't even load the dishwasher because I couldn't bend over. I can't, you know, couldn't go grocery shopping. Um, <laughs> let alone, nah, let alone <laughs> the other things. He hated it. He hated it. You love that I'm back now. So. I do. <laughs> but don't don't be afraid and you know listen to the doctor and and do what yeah. you're supposed to do so that you, yeah. it's only time and it's only a short period of time. Yeah. You know, you can wait. Right, but it's months. better to take that short time to heal so yeah. you have the long time to do what yeah. you want. Yeah. And if we yep. had waited longer, there would have been more discs involved and you know not there is a point where it's too late to put the hybrid disc in. Yep. So yeah, it would have been worse. There yeah. would have been more fusions. There would have been more replacements yeah. uh, and all that. Yeah. And that, then it just only gets uh, worse and worse after yeah, that. So I just sure. say, just yeah. when it gets to a point where it's affecting your life and yeah. what you are doing to, you know, go and get it checked yeah. out and, and take the risk and yeah. see what the doctor says. And, and really skip all the other doctors because we wasted years yeah. um, going doctors. in. We would wait till it's, you know, really bad and go and find someone, see them, go through the different, their processes and 
and same conclusion. It, it wasn't right for us. We weren't willing to sacrifice and get worse. Yep. So. All right. Good luck yeah. chasing your kids on the mountain this year. <laughs> oh yeah, thank you. We're gonna need it. <laughs> you, you, yeah, you, you need to be in tip-top shape. It sounds like to keep up with them. I did. Thank you both bring, for sharing your story. I did, I did make him bring his medals. Oh yeah. Oh wait, well you want to show those out before you go? He got first on Rail Jam. This is my national championship medal, gold medal Rail for Rail Jam. Jam, and this is my silver for Slope Stop. Yep. And you're gonna go back and compete again, right? Yes, that's the goal for this year. Yeah. Go yep. get him. Yeah. Awesome. We'll keep you two posted. <laughs> Please do. Please do. So great to talk to you guys. Thank you. You too. Thank, Thank you. you.